feel the direct power in your hands. <laughs> direct copper. Direct power. Direct copper heat pipes. <laughs> that, it's somewhere, but that voice kind of reminded me of Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jesse Ventura, you know, if they had a baby. So I've got the 760 in my hand right here. This is this is tiny. It's a you know custom PCB. There's a totally separate video just talking about all the technology that goes into this because I mean really guys, there's a gazillion different graphics card manufacturers out there making a gazillion different SKUs and a gazillion different parts. Um, so they're going to be all over the board. But the this thing is, is a totally non-reference. Yeah, design. it's totally non-reference, and that's what really makes it different than a lot of the other graphics cards that are out there because the benchmarks, and that's what we're going to do in this video in just a second. We're just going to go through all the benchmarks and show you how fast this is. But the benchmarks are going to be very similar from one card to another. Maybe a little bit faster with an overclock card like this. Uh, some other cards out there maybe have even higher clock speeds. But what you should really look for when you're buying a card like this, you should look at the technology that's used in the card. You should look at the quality of the components and then make your decision based upon that. You'll have a card that's cooler, it's quieter, and it lasts longer. And uh, for somebody, you know, like me, that's kind of what I've started going for in life. I want stuff that I can, you know, sort of a buy it for life mentality, even though hardware is not a buy it for life item. You get what I'm saying, right? Well, you want to buy it and get the best bang for your buck so it lasts as long as it possible. And which means maybe spending a couple extra bucks. I, I almost always end up spending a couple extra dollars to get better parts. I mean, it's like... So it'll last longer. Yeah, it's like buying stuff from a, a guy that handcrafted it versus going to Walmart. This, this card is small. In fact, it's so small that it'll fit into this. This is the Lee and Lee... Put it up here so you guys can really see it without the copy being in the way. Lee and Lee PCTU100. Um, we shot a little video on this, and that'll be coming up very soon. It's really small, and um, I've seen a few reviews floating around out there. I'm going to have to do a review to set some people straight because I think the guy on a non-tech said that this was uh, lacking because you could do the same thing with the Prodigy, but it's like literally less than half the size of a Prodigy, so... You could put four of those in a Prodigy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's small. You're obviously making sacrifices, but that's not what this video is about. <laughs> anyway, I just like it, and it's cool. I'm probably going to end up putting this into there. So let's get down to business with the benchmarks. We benchmark Bioshock Infinite. And running at max settings. All the settings are on the website, um, so you guys can see the exact Go things. Go read the article. Do it. Do it or else. 1080p. Uh, the average was 62.12 frames per second. Um, it dropped down to 6.3 frames during a scene change, but we disregard that stuff because it's not during the actual gameplay. The gameplay was actually smooth. Uh, max was 103.28. At 1440p, 40.46 frames per second. 1080p Counter-Strike Go, the average was 213.56 frames per second. It's running at max, of Which course. Which is ridiculous. Yeah, it just... I, I, we wanted to sh I wanted to show you guys a Source Engine game. Sometimes we do Black Mesa Source, sometimes we do CSGO. It depends on what color my underwear is. 1440p, the average was 135.20. Natural Selection 2. Uh, we had ambient occlusion on and off, just to show you what it's like with the, the with the technology on and off. Um, 1080p, the average was 72.68 frames per second. Ambient occlusion turned off. 81.28 frames per second. All the settings are on the website, but it's I'll tell you right now, everything's maxed out, except for the ambient occlusion turning on and off, and we play everything in the same level, doing the same stuff. So yeah, 1440p with ambient occlusion turned on, 40.52 frames per second. Stable and... Uh, it's playing pretty well, but I would probably turn ambient occlusion off. Oh, sorry, no more fancy shadows and glowy things. Whatever ambient occlusion <laughs> does. <laughs> That's not bad for a system the size of a cigar humidor. Yep, uh, 53.48 frames per second at 1440p. Trying to. I do like me some trying to benchmarks. Maximum settings at 1080p, 48.04 frames per second. Now, you turn the uh, filters down from, like, the, you know, the MSAA and everything gone crazy. You turn it down to just... FXAA, and you get 60.92 frames per second. And for me, uh, I like having a few, the, the little bit of an extra bump, and I don't notice much of a difference in quality with the filters like that. You still have nice quality textures. Uh, 1440p, however, uh, does get a little bit rough. It's 27.64 frames per second with maximum settings. And uh, when you turn the filters back down, it uh, is 34.48 frames per second. So there you have it. Game was a little bit rough at 1440p with this card. Um, a lot of people are putting this up against the uh, the GTX 670 because it's sort of a replacement. It's very similar to that card. It has uh, more memory bandwidth, but not quite as much of everything else. It's very, very, very similar. So in some of our benchmarks, we've discovered that this is actually a slight bit faster than the 670 
at 1440p in most games, but not usually at 1080p. It's usually one one to two frames per second, sometimes five frames per second slower than a 670, but the price is so much lower. Yeah, this is a much better buy. Yeah, it's it's lower with this this heat, heat sink. It's nice and cool. And I mean, there is the you know if you need something smaller than this, ASUS does have the the 670 Direct CU Two Mini. That thing's tiny. I'm not sure how they did it. It's ridiculous. It's got one blower fan on it and. That's it. But it's even a little bit smaller than this. Yeah, it is. It's ridiculously small. But uh, my money's going here. I love the 760. It's a beast for, for 1440p in most games. If you have a 1080p um, game that has a lot of filters, the 760 is going to be faster. Yeah. It, it loves... Like like I was saying in the... What, what video did we just make? Or that, was that this video that I said that? I don't remember. The 670s flex is harder, but it's got on a shirt that's too tight. Oh, I think that was the last video. That's it. I, I want to see that like on a billboard. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to pay because my ego is such that I need to see my own words on a billboard. The 670 is really tiny. It'll also fit in the Lee and Lee case that you've got there with the iPad retina display. Oh, it'll fit in here, yeah. I keep... But regular 760s will never fit in there. Yeah, it barely fits in there with the uh, SFX power supply on the bottom. Yep. Which do not exist if you ask salespeople at Micro Center. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. It's SFX, what? There's no such thing. You mean like Hollywood-style stuff? This is the decade of the tiny desktop computer. It's, we're just getting started, and it's going to get smaller. We're going to see power supplies in the next five years get tiny. We better. Well, as soon as laptops Everybody. have proper... PC laptops have proper Thunderbolt ports, so you can have an, a proper external video card docking solution. That'll be awesome. Uh, we've seen a few of them floating around out there. I think Silverstone has one floating around. Yeah, Intel just won't okay stuff, which is silly. Do we know anybody at Silverstone? We're just digressing at this point. You can close the video. Unless you want to hang out and just chat with us for a little bit, but that's all the benchmarks and that's all the stuff. There's no more content, okay? Unless you consider this content, unless you're that this, bored. This is not content. This is delightful banter. Delightful banter, is that what they call it? <laughs> There's people listen to this crap on the radio, like in the mornings, instead of listening to like the news and stuff. They just listen to it too. But usually that's like guys farting and you know run, naked people running around and firecrackers <laughs> in your ear and stuff. Morning radio, is that's what it is in middle America, right? Yeah. It's, well, it's. Uh, I, I thought morning radio was done best in Grand Theft Auto. The talk radio stations in Grand Theft Auto <laughs> were amazing. <laughs> God, I haven't played that in such a long time. Memories. All right, uh, subscribe. If you don't, I'll cry. Bye. No one didn't know what you meant. Yeah. Everyone knew what you meant. That's better. Nobody didn't know what you meant. I didn't know what you just meant. Um, kind of strike, go. <laughs> but you did know what I meant, which is the funny part. I didn't know that I didn't. I didn't know that I did know what. What the hell?